because I was on vacation. Let me just go through the timeline very quickly. It was spring 2015 and a very bad budget was coming through. And that budget was in the House of Representatives. Actually, it was in March. And I voted against that budget. It was just amazing tax cuts with very little, if anything, to do with supporting the opioid crisis. Um, that got changed because, as you know, the Senate and the House work out their differences, and they presented a budget which, because I was in the minority, we didn't have a whole lot of influence on that budget. But the final version was a little more friendly, but still it cut out a promised raise to the state employees and it had tax cuts in it that did not have any circuit breakers built in. Now, if you remember back in Medicaid expansion times, we were required and I thought it was appropriate to have fiscally responsible circuit breakers put in, which said if the federal government changes their uh, commitment to Medicaid expansion, we had to reauthorize it. The same thing was lacking from these tax cuts. So if we couldn't afford the tax cuts in 2018 when they were coming through, they were going to go through anyway. In, I think, a stroke of brilliance, our governor put in circuit breakers that, or insisted on these circuit breakers, and when they weren't in the final bill, she vetoed that. About three weeks later, I'm on vacation standing at Bartlett's farm, and my phone rings, and it's Maggie. And she's saying, I have a compromise for the Republicans. Now, timeline-wise, this is mid-July 2015. I have a compromise, and I'm going to present it to the Republicans. I listened to her, and I said, boy, that sounds perfect. It included their tax cuts, but it put in a very fiscally responsible circuit breaker that said, if we, have a, as a state, did not have enough revenue to support those tax cuts, they wouldn't go through. Well they wouldn't return her calls. <laughs> they wouldn't even answer the phone. This is mid-July. It took them two months of vacation time before they said, okay, now we'll answer the phone. And so it was mid-September before they actually would engage the governor and the rest of us in meaningful discussion to come up with what eventually became the compromise. That bill, with our governor's leadership, was in front of them in July, not September. The responsibility for that two month delay was with the Republican leadership in the House and the Senate, not with our governor. And that's really important because that's one of the reasons that, that's one of the ways that they are saying we delayed the uh, funding for the, we did not. It was available, that compromise was available and it was written by the governor. Same thing with the special session. We would not have had a special session, we would not have had a joint task force to deal with the opioid and heroin uh, epidemic without strong leadership from the governor calling for that special session. And when the leadership refused to do it, that means the Republican leadership of the House and Senate, she did a very nice end run, if you like football, uh, <laughs> around them to the Executive Council and said, we really need to do this, and that's what happened. We have a proud tradition of strong women leading our state. Woo! Both, at home, both at home and in Washington. Uh, and right now, that strong leadership is only ex exemplified by one of our senators in Washington, and that's, of course, Jean Shaheen. Mm -hmm. We need to bring that strong woman leadership to 100% of our senators, independent, New Hampshire first leadership. And with that, I'd like to welcome the next senator from New Hampshire. Thank you, Tom, for the introduction. Thank you also for your leadership. What I hope everybody here knows is that as a state representative, Tom Sherman helped make the compromise that got us Medicaid expansion and got it reauthorized. So thank you for your leadership. Woo, Tom. And Tom is going to be a great next state senator. And, uh, and I am thrilled to be back in Seabrook, which was one of the towns I represented in the state senate. 
I have done an awful lot of door knocking all around here, and uh, it's a wonderful community, and I <coughs> hope very much uh, that you guys will um, do as much as you can for the next two weeks. I know you're all here, I know you're all revved up, uh, but this knocking on doors, the outreach, the talking, citizen to citizen really makes a difference, especially in an election year where there's just so much coming at everybody out of the TV, sometimes they really don't know what to make of things, right? So I am really grateful that all of you are here. Um, I have been running for office now in this wonderful state of ours every two years since 2002. Um, my husband calls it a lifestyle. Um, and I, that means I have been standing in front of groups like this saying words to the effect um, of this is the most important election of your lifetime. And hi, Linda. Hi. <laughs> um, and you know, I am now running against somebody for the, this U.S. Senate seat who stood right with Mitch McConnell on the Supreme Court blockade. She's still doing that. And until just a couple of weeks ago was standing right with Donald Trump. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. Until she put her finger in the wind after the Access Hollywood tapes yes. and discovered maybe that wasn't such a good <laughs> idea for her. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you know, one has to answer, ask the question, so 35 times over the last nine or 10 months, you said Donald Trump should be president, you were gonna vote for him, you supported him. And then the Access Hollywood tapes come out, which surprised no one I know. No. <laughs> they were horrible, yes, graphic, yes, but I don't think they surprised any of us. Consistent. And all of a sudden, now she can't support him, which means either she just had very bad judgment for the last nine months, or all of this is one big political calculation for her. And I will talk a little bit in a moment about the fact that really her entire campaign is one big attempt to walk back from her support of a truly, truly far-right, lockstep partisan agenda. 